OK, so today's lesson is going to be calculating the mean for a frequency table. Um, the way it's going to work is I'm going to go through some examples and then you're going to get a chance to practice it. We're particularly going to focus on what a frequency table is before moving on to calculating the mean, because that's going to be really, really important. Um, first of all, you need to have your exit ticket from last lesson ready to mark, um, because that's going to be the do now task for today. Um, pay particular attention, those of you that struggled on median. Um, if you need to skip around or you need to pause the video, go back to the different sections, all the timings are on Show My Homework and on the YouTube video as well. OK, so exit ticket. This is an opportunity for you to mark your work. I've looked through everybody's that submitted and most of you did really well on working out the mean. We seem quite confident that what we need to do is add together all the numbers in our list and divide by how many there are. So although this looks a bit complicated, this will be exactly what you've put into your calculator. The top line of this fraction is all our data points being added together and eight is the number of data points we have. So the number of numbers in our original list. So if you do all of that and put it into your calculator, you should get a mean of 68 points. For the mode, again, lots of us did really, really well on this. We're feeling quite confident with working out the most common. Um, do get in the habit of writing your list in order of smallest to biggest, because it will help you with the range and it will help you with the median question as well. OK, so if you write your numbers in the original list in order of smallest to biggest, we can see quite easily that 62 is the only number that appears more than once. It appears twice and that makes our mode 62. OK, so the median number, lots of us struggled on this. We're really good at working out the median where there's an odd number of uh, data points in our list. But where there's an even number, I think lots of us have got stuck. So just take careful note if you're one of those people and you weren't quite sure what to do. OK, step one with the median is always, always, always write your original list in order of smallest to biggest. Absolutely critical that you do this or else you're going to go wrong straight away. So I've rewritten my list in order of smallest to biggest, just as I did with the mode. And if you've done that for the mode, you could have reused that list. OK, so you've got your list in order. And then what we're going to do is try and find the middle number or numbers. So you're going to cross off pairs of numbers at the, each end of the list until there is one or two middle numbers left. And that's going to look like this. OK, so we're crossing off 50 and 82, 62 and 79, 62 and 74. And we are left with two numbers in the middle. This is not the end of the question. You need to find the midpoint of these two numbers. So what you're going to do is basically work out the mean of them. You're going to add them together and you're going to divide them by two because that's how many numbers there are. So the actual median for this list also involves finding the mean of the two middle numbers, which is 67.5. Might be a little bit confusing, so please do pause the video if you need to so you can make some notes. OK, last question on the range. Generally, we did this quite well. Some of us got a bit confused about which numbers we were taking away. So again, thinking back to the questions before, if you put your list in order of smallest to biggest, it's really easy to work out which numbers to take away from each other because they're at the um, far left of your list and the far right of your list. So our range is going to be the largest value in our list to take away our smallest which is 82 minus 50, and that is going to give us a range of 32. OK, so the objective of today's lesson is to be able to calculate the mean from a frequency table. So first of all, we need to understand what frequency is. So just pause the video and see if you can think of some examples of what frequency might mean when you've come across it in your day to day. So just pause the video for a moment. OK, so you might have come up with some ideas on what frequency might mean in your day to day. We've got this image here and this is actually sound waves. So it's the frequency of sound waves. And if you notice that the colours and the lines are quite close together. So that's how often 
um, the whatever it is, the sound vibrates so that it reaches your ear. So we're talking about how often or counting how many. So keep that in mind. In math, so we've got this example on the right. Imagine that you're doing a survey and you've asked um, a number of people um, what type of pet they have in their household. So you would record it in a table, you're doing your survey. So someone said dog and you'd put a tally mark, one mark in your dog row. Um, someone said cat, you put one mark in your cat row and so on until you'd interviewed all your people. You would add up your tally and this is what your frequency is. It's your total number. So it's how many people, for example, said that they have a dog in their household. So in this survey, 12 people said they had dogs. Seven people said they had cats. Six people said they had a goldfish and so on. So frequency is just um, how many, how many of something. OK, so we're going to go through some worked examples um, and hopefully as we go through this, you're going to get um, more confident with what we're trying to find in terms of frequency in our tables. So you're going to need to pause the video quite often and just work along with me here. OK, so what I'm going to show you is the time a selection of students spent doing their maths homework. So first of all, we're starting with a list of data. We've got some students that spent four minutes, five minutes, six minutes and seven minutes on their homework. And the statement that says our frequency, so how many, is 22. So just pause the video and think to yourself, do I think this is true or false? Is the frequency of students um, spending time on their homework 22? OK, so hopefully um, you came up with the answer of false, but don't worry if you didn't. If you add together all the minutes in this list, they do add up to 22, but we're not talking about how many minutes, we're talking about how many students. So it's really important we're thinking about how many what are we talking about when we're talking about our frequency. So we said frequency of 22 for this list is false. OK, so we've got the same list. And this time the statement is saying the frequency is four. Do you think this is true or do you think this is false? So just pause the video if you need time to think. OK, so hopefully this time you got an answer of true. But again, don't worry if you don't or you have no idea what's going on. It will become clearer as we work through these examples. So four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. These times represent a student each time. And there are four students in total because there are four pieces of data. So our frequency relates to the number of pieces of data. So please keep that in mind when we're going through into our frequency tables. Let's do another example. OK, so this time we've got four minutes, five minutes, six minutes and six minutes. Do we think the frequency is four? Is that statement true or false? Pause the video if you need to think. OK, so hopefully we're starting to get the idea. This answer is true. There are four pieces of data in our list um, that represent four students. So our frequency is four. OK, another um, a question. So this time we've got a different um, number of students and we said our frequency is four. So do we think that that statement is true or false? OK, so the answer is false. This time we've got five pieces of data. We've got zero minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes and another six minutes. So in total, that represents five students answering that particular survey on how many minutes they spent on their homework. OK, question five, we've got the same data again. Um, we said the frequency is five. Do we think that statement is true or false? OK, so hopefully you got an answer of true. There are five pieces of data, so we're not interested in how many minutes in this particular list because of all of our data is, is there. So we're just counting how many pieces of data. OK, so in this table, we've got time in minutes. We've got zero minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes and six minutes and a frequency of five. A little bit trickier, maybe. But do we think um, that our frequency is five? Is that true or false? OK, 
Okay, it's true. So those that are noticing patterns will see that the data in this table is exactly the same as in question five. We've just written it in a table. Okay, so a little bit different this time. We've got time in minutes and frequency. So remember our frequency column is how many? So we've got zero minutes and one student spend that amount of time. Four minutes, one student spend that amount of time. Five minutes, one student spend that amount of time. And six minutes, we've got a frequency of two. So frequency equals four. What's our total frequency for this question? Is it four or is it not? OK, it is not because if you add up the frequency column, one plus one is two plus another one is three plus another two is five. OK, so if we're looking at this question, eight is exactly the same. We would find that the answer is true because we're adding up our frequency column, not our time in minutes. Now, we're not counting how many is in that column because we've got a different column that says frequency. OK, so similar to question eight, we've got a column that says time in minutes and we've got a frequency column. So this is just a way of organising a list of data so that it's a bit easier to read. Do we think our frequency is four, true or false? OK, so in this case, the answer is true, because if we add up all the numbers in our frequency column, one plus one is two, add another two is four. OK, question 10. Is our frequency 4, true or false? Pause the video if you need time to do some addition. OK, so the answer is true again, because if we add up all the numbers in our frequency column, um, we have a total of 4. Question 11. We've got a frequency of 11. Is that true or is that false? OK, so you should have had an answer of true. Eight plus zero is eight. Plus one is nine. Plus another two is 11. Plus zero is 11. So in our frequency column, we add up all the numbers. We get our total frequency of 11. OK, so this is another table that you might see in question 12. What we've got here in our time column is what we call inequalities. So this just means between zero minutes and less than two minutes. We have eight students that spent this time on their homework. Between two minutes and less than four minutes, zero students spent that amount of time on their homework and so on. So do we think the frequency is 11, true or false? And the answer is true. OK, and last one here. Do we think the frequency is four, true or false? OK, it's going to be false, although we have four rows in our time. What's actually important here is adding up our frequency column. OK, so we went through quite a lot of examples there. I'd just like you to have a go at these three questions. Now, pause the video if you're working from um, here so that you can have a chance to work on this before we move on. OK, so hopefully you've worked through those questions. First of all, we've got a list of data. So our frequency is just how many pieces of data are in that list. And we've got five pieces of data. In question two, we're adding up our frequency column. And this adds up to nine. And in question three, again, we're just adding up our frequency column. It doesn't matter that we're dealing with group data. Our total frequency for that is 14. OK, so calculating the mean from a frequency table, the type of data we were looking at at the beginning is not going to work for calculating the mean. And the reason is we've got things like dog, cat, goldfish, budgie. If we wanted to find the mean animal, um, it would be impossible because we're talking about numbers. So we need our data to be numeric. OK, so here is our worked example. What you need to make sure you're doing is when I'm going through these examples, you're writing down the worked example as well as having a go at the your turn, just so that it's, you have lots of notes to refer to when you've got the practice exercises on the go. Um, so what we want to do is calculate the mean age um, of the group of data here. So we need two pieces of information to calculate the mean. 
OK, so I've just written the formula down below. Um, so our mean is going to be our total age multiplied by our frequency divided by the total frequency. OK, so let me show you how we work out total age times frequency. So we're going to have an additional column here. This is going to be our age multiplied by, and I'm just going to write freak um, for a frequency. So what I'm saying is 7 times 1 will give us the value for this row. 8 times 4 is going to give us the value for this row. 9 times 2 is going to give us the value for this row. And 10 times 3 is going to give us the value for this row. OK, so what we want, first of all, is the total. So this is this bit here. The total age times frequency. So you can use a calculator and you can add up all of those numbers. And if we do that, then we're going to get a total of 87. So I'm just going to write on top of my fraction 87. OK, so the second bit of information I need is this total frequency. So I'm going to draw my totals line here. 1 plus 4 is 5, plus another 2 is 7, plus another 3 is 10. So our calculation for the mean from this frequency table is 87 which is our age times our frequency all added up, divided by the total frequency, so by how many pieces of data there are in this list. And that will give us a mean of 8.7. OK, so if we were looking at this table, we could say, on average, um, the age of the children in this list is 8.7 years old. OK, so make sure you pause the video and make some notes. And then what I would like you to do is have a go at this question on the right, following the process I've just gone through. So pause the video um, to allow you some time to do that. And then I'll go through the answer in just a moment. OK, so hopefully you've worked through that question now. I'm going to go through the answers. So remember, first of all, we need um, the total age times frequency. So we're going to have age times our frequency here. And what we're going to do is say 7 times 2, and that gives us 14. 8 times 8, that gives us 64. 9 times 4, that gives us 36. And 10 times 6, and we're going to end up with 60. And then to get our total age times frequency, we're going to use a calculator and add all of that up. When we've done that, we're going to end up with an answer of 174. So, so far, we've got our mean, and that equals 174. And then we need to divide it by our total frequency. So how many pieces of data are in our list? So if we add up the numbers in that list, 2 plus 8 gives us 10. Add another 4 gives us 14 and add a 6, we get 20. So the total number of pieces of data in our list is 20. And if we use our calculator to work that out, we again get an answer of 8.7. So we can say, on average, the age of uh, students in this list is 8.7 years old. OK, so now it's your turn. I would like you to work through these questions. There are eight questions, so four on this slide, four in the next one. Pause the video so that you have time to work through those. OK, so just make sure you pause the video so you have time to work through these questions as well. OK, so answers are up. Please mark your answers. Hopefully you've got these results. Remember, it's really important that you're um, following the examples that I've given because this is your method. So if you've got stuck, um, see if you can go back to those examples, watch them through, make some corrections. And if you can't, please do uh, message me on Show My Homework and I can always um, help you with any questions you're really not sure about. OK, and the answers for questions five to eight, just pause the video if you need to. OK, so finally, this is not an exit ticket. You don't need to submit this. OK, this is just a last question consolidating what we've done in the lesson. So we've got Aidan playing 50 games in an arcade. The table shows how many tickets he won in each game. 
So first of all, we want to work out the missing frequency. So we're working out what goes here. Bearing in mind, Aiden has played 50 games. Um, part B, we want to work out the total number of tickets won. Um, so thinking about how we would work out total number of tickets won. So just thinking about this. That's going to be for part B. Um, part C, we want to work out the mean number of tickets. So that's following the method. We've just been through to work out the mean. And then a bit more of a thinky question. Aidan wants to exchange his ticket for a prize that costs 800 tickets. How many more games do you expect Aidan would have to play? So this is definitely a stretch question um, for those of you that are feeling a lot more confident so far. OK, so we've got answers up here. The missing frequency is going to be six. Um, if you add up all the numbers in this frequency column, they're going to equal 46. That means, uh, sorry, 44. So you need six more to make it up to 50 games. So we already worked out that our frequency is 50. To work out the number of tickets won, we need to multiply um, each of these rows. So four times zero is zero. Let's just do that. One times three is going to give us three. Two times five is going to give us ten. Um, and we're multiplying all the way down through this row. And we're going to end up with um, our total number of tickets at the end of that. So we can just fill that in. And that should equal 203 tickets at the end. OK, so the next question asking about the mean. All you're doing is taking your total number of tickets won and you're dividing it by the total frequency, which should give you 4.06. OK, so Aidan wants to exchange his ticket for a prize that costs 800 tickets. How many more games do you expect Aidan to have to play? So first of all, we want the total number of tickets, which is this 203. And we're going to take that away from 800. So he needs... 597 but what this number represents is the number of tickets and actually we want to know how many games Aiden has won so to work out the number of games we divide the number of tickets by the mean so because our mean means we're working um, to get an average of 4.06 tickets per game so what we end up when we divide that is we get approximately 147 games, but it might be a little bit more, it might be a little bit less.